How much maths is there in a chemistry degree? Do you need to do A-level maths before studying chemistry at university? So I'm currently doing a PhD in machine learning interpretation at the University of Southampton and I also have a bachelor's in chemistry, which um, it should have been chemistry of maths, but that's a long story. But that's also from the University of Southampton. And in this video, I'm going to explain basically how much maths there is when you're studying a degree in chemistry and um, what kind of prerequisites or should you have A-level maths before considering studying a degree in chemistry. So let's talk about course structures and prerequisites. Now, a lot of your first year, um, regardless if you do A-level maths or not, will be revolved around bringing you up to speed with the maths required for physical chemistry. So physical chemistry um, focuses on things like kinetics, uh, thermodynamics and a lot of the more mathematical context, uh, concepts in, within chemistry. And a lot of the time and in, in a lot of different courses, part of those core physical chemistry modules you have in your first year will dedicate purely to bringing you up to speed with math. So I'm talking from the perspective of someone who studied at Southampton, but this information will apply to a lot of other universities as well. At my university, A-level maths was not compulsory unless you were doing the combined honours chemistry with maths degree, which was, which was what I was doing. But essentially, because of this, a lot of physical chemistry that you study in your first, second and third year requires some mathematical knowledge, of course. So a lot of first year was divided between learning physical chemistry and applying it, but also learning just pure maths to bring people to, up to speed for the stuff that will come in second year and third year. So in your first year, you'll be covering the core stuff in chemistry. So you'll be doing organic chemistry, physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry. And these are all the basic stuff and the fundamentals that we, you'll be using later on in the degree. Now, physical chemistry is usually split up into two sections. Most of it, or about 75% of it, will be physical chemistry, so the applications, and the other 25% will be learning the maths, because in order to understand the concepts and the applications, you need to have a grounding in maths, and it's especially important for second and third year when the topics get more involved. So the maths covered in these specific courses that are made for physical chemistry is very basic. It's usually algebraic manipulation, a bit of log rules. Um, equation of a straight line for things like rearranging the Arrhenius equation, log rules for things like pH calculations, and there's a bit of calculus as well. So in the second year is when things start to pick up and you start to apply some of the mathematical modules you've learned and you also learn some new stuff. So in the first semester we did a module to do with uh, molecular interactions. You start off by learning about linear operators in the context of quantum mechanics and the Schrodinger equation. However, you never learn how to actually solve PDEs, which is another issue that I'll talk about in a bit. We talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix for Huckle Hamiltonian. And we also cover things like basic vectors and scalars and dot products and cross products. We also cover integration by parts and using some trigonometric identities that you cover in A-level maths about normalizing wave functions and integrating. There was also one strange workshop that we did which was on Lagrange multipliers which was um, in the context of deriving the Boltzmann distribution but this is really weird because we've never been taught partial derivatives. Now for me that was okay because I did partial derivatives in my first year but yeah that was a bit of a questionable one. I think it was just for a workshop content and to kind of give context behind the Boltzmann distribution but that is something that did come up. So everything I mentioned thus far is basically what's compulsory and what's needed to go through and pass the physical chemistry modules. These are things that you have no choice in learning um, you have to do them and they're part of and associated with physical chemistry. These aren't, aren't the, the stuff that is that I've outlined isn't part of optional modules. As a part of your course, you'll be taking optional modules as well. These can be in a variety of different subjects, but there's also math specific optional modules that are offered by the chemistry department. So these are options that cover purely maths, sometimes a bit of context and a bit of application within chemistry, but it's supplied by the chemistry department themselves. These cover a more broad range of mathematics. You start to go into calculus and things like partial differential equations and more complex vector calculus and all that kind of stuff. And if you're doing a combined honors degree with chemistry with maths, you'd be doing options only in maths that are offered by the math department themselves. So my first year, I did calculus one and two, which was single and multivariable calculus, um, which also came with a lot of like proof and more fundamental grounding, things like the fundamental theorem of calculus and all those kind of axioms and proofs. I didn't really enjoy it, but I had to do it. And my second year, I did linear algebra and dynamics and relativity. Linear algebra is to do with vectors and matrices, eigenvectors and eigen equations. Uh, dynamics and relativity was more physics applied. So you, we did um, some dynamics, which is basically uh, mechanics and also some stuff on special relativity, which I never really understood. In my third year, I did vector calculus and complex variable theory. So vector calculus is again, more of an extension of linear algebra and complex variable theory. I don't know how to explain it. It sounds really difficult, but I find it quite easy. Um, and then in my, in my last semester, in my third year, I did partial differential equations. 
So let's move on to the topic of do you need A-level maths or AS maths at the very least to study a degree in chemistry? Now, in my opinion, you should be taking A-level maths or AS at the very minimum if you want to be studying chemistry at university. And I'm saying this in the context of even if your course doesn't specifically require A-level maths, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend taking A-level maths if you want to study chemistry at university. The reason I say that is because it makes your life a lot easier. An example of this is that in my first year, as I mentioned before, the physical chemistry was split up into two sections. You had the physical chemistry lectures, which uh, made up the bulk of it, but also the associated math lectures. Now, these math lectures basically covered some very, very basic stuff, as I mentioned before. Things like factorising quadratics, um, the equation of a straight line, algebraic manipulation, and differentiating things like x squared and integrating x squared. The stuff you would have done, basically, I think even GCC level now covers this stuff. But also, I had done it like many times and gone over it a lot of times in AS and A2. So this stuff was easy. The lectures that went over this stuff, because obviously the university has to, or the course has to make sure that everyone's at the same level, even if you did A-level maths, this exam that was associated with the physical chemistry was compulsory. So we had two physical chemistry lectures per week, but also a math lecture associated with that. Now this math lecture in my first year was actually at 9 a.m. on a Thursday morning. So as you can imagine, having covered most of the stuff that was in that, in fact everything, and not really having to put much effort into that, my attendance to that was, let's say, questionable. But at the end of the day, because I had done AS and A2 maths, and actually did, I even did AS further maths, I didn't have to go because I just knew the stuff already. And it was very much a question of, okay, let me just go over the topics that I haven't seen in a while and also practice the questions that focus more on application of using those mathematical methods in physical chemistry. So I saved myself a lot of time and effort and waking up at 9am in the morning or even before that, just on the basis that I had done A-level maths. So the majority of people doing a chemistry degree I want to go and do something in research or practical based or work in industry. Now, just because you do a chemistry degree doesn't mean you're going to be in a lab for the rest of your life. There are research topics within chemistry that require a lot of maths and a lot of theory. For example, NMR, computational chemistry and parts of electrochemistry as well. And the term I like to use is numeric literacy. So the more maths you do, the more of this numeric literacy you have and the more areas you open up for yourself. For example, just because you have a degree in chemistry, you could go in to do a postgraduate research project or a master's degree or a PhD in physics or even engineering. So as I mentioned, having a degree in chemistry can open the doors for you and that's down to basically having an uh, interdisciplinary set of skills, but also the more math you know, the more doors you can open and you can do projects and research in physics or engineering as a postgraduate, as a master's degree or a PhD. I'm an example of this. My PhD is in machine learning or machine learning interpretation, let's say, with applications in chemistry. So the applications are to do with quantum mechanics and that side of things, but the actual crux of it is interpreting neural networks, which is a lot of linear algebra and vectors and computer science. And it's only possible for me as a chemist to do a postgraduate research degree, a PhD in basically computer science and quantum physics almost, because I did so much math in my undergraduate degree. And I remember this is quite a profound thing, is that my supervisor, when I first had the interview to get onto that PhD program, um, he said, oh, I've seen you've done linear algebra, this is gonna be good. And that was like such a sigh of relief because I might make another video on this and I've kind of briefly spoken about it in a previous video, but essentially when I applied to university, um, I got in through clearing in Southampton but I only had an offer for a BSc in chemistry and I really wanted to do chemistry with maths because I knew at some point having the extra with maths would um, open more doors for me. So I took a gap year purely to retake A-level maths and transfer onto the chemistry MChem with maths purely for this reason. And then a few years down the line, when I'm kind of <laughs> almost achieved what I want to do, because I always wanted to do a PhD, um, the first thing my supervisor said was, I've seen you done maths. So that kind of gap year paid off. And that's all down to me kind of thinking the more maths I have, the more doors are open and that just happened to be the case. So to summarise, really as a chemist, as someone who's studying a degree in chemistry at a good university, you will have to study maths whether you like it or not. Now this math is very doable, it's not the most impossible thing. I understand that not everyone's going to enjoy math and some people are more practical and prefer things like organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. But believe me, I believe the math is very doable if you just put the work in. For those who enjoy maths, it's actually kind of the flip side. Sometimes there's not enough mathematical content for you. For some people, the math actually isn't enough. For example, for me, I really enjoy math and physics. So I would advise picking a course that has a lot of optional modules or a lot of scope for optional modules or even a combined honours degree, like I did a chemistry with maths degree, because that means all my options were in maths and I really enjoyed maths. So if you're picking a course and you know that you enjoy chemistry, but you also enjoy some other subjects as well, make sure if you look at your course structure, see how many options they offer you. And if these options are in a, in a broad range of fields, for example, physics, biology, or maths. 
And I can tell you from experience that having more physics, having more maths, in specific, specifically more maths, can really open some doors for you. And if you're studying A-levels or you've just finished your GCSEs and you're about to pick your A-level options, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend picking AS maths at the very, very, very least and doing A2 maths if you want to study a degree in chemistry. And if anything, do further maths as well. It just makes your life easier. It means you don't have to commit so much time in your first year to catching up with math because whether you like it or not, you will have to learn math at some point. So it's better to do it earlier and have more free time in your first and second year at university rather than just doing the maths now, basically. And with that, I think I've mentioned everything that I want to mention. If anyone has any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.